Our multi-hyphenate guests recently made a life-changing decision. Art and creativity have been a part of Jocelyn Bedford's life and are evident in her professional endeavors as an actress, teacher, and now an artist. What started as a hobby during the pandemic became a lifestyle and one that will change the course of her life forever. As a teacher of 21 years, one would expect that she's all about rules and abiding by them. But in my conversation with Jocelyn, she shared the importance of going against the current and letting your curiosity take the front seat. Tune in as we talk about consistency and why it is a powerful tool for beginners, breaking rules and finding creative solutions in art, a secret technique to fast-track finding your art style, and challenging the norm and allowing your inner artist to shine through. If you want to be part of the conversation, then send in your questions and topics you want us to cover to hello at etcherlab.com. Hey, this is Jesse from Etcher. We believe in your power to create, so we invited artists from all around the globe to inspire you to keep on creating. Join us in this journey and let's celebrate creativity. This is Make More Art, the podcast. And Jocelyn, thank you so much for joining Make More Art. It's such an honor to have you on. And I'm pretty excited because I know that you will be teaching with us. I've read mm-hmm. interesting facts about you. I'm going to let you go on <laughs> and share with our audience what those are, but I know that you just retired and that's so surprising considering how young you are so before we dive into the details Joseph, <laughs> welcome to the show can you share a little bit more about your journey how you started from being an actress to a teacher and an artist I can't <laughs> to merge those three together but can you help me out and put those you know they can connect the dots between those three and share us your journey well it's interesting that you bring that up because um, I actually only started painting just about two years ago, just over two years ago. Um, it was a pandemic hobby that just kind of took over my life. Um, and it came out of the blue. I had never really done much visual arts. I had not I had not been satisfied with my drawing as a child uh, or as a young adult. Um, painting kind of intimidated me. Um, The one thing that I used to love to do when I was a little kid was color. I've always been enthralled with color combinations. So I had all of these very sophisticated coloring books and I would spend hours and hours and hours combining colors um, in those. But when I was when I realized how much art was meaning to me and I I was thinking, oh, this comes completely out of the blue. But then I started thinking back through my life and I realized, you know, I had done the the coloring and I used to um, sew things. And then I was an artist, uh, I'm sorry, an actress for for my entire young adult life. Um, I had to support that with waiting on tables as most (laughs) actors do, but you know, I did a lot of acting. Um, and then I segued into um, being an elementary school teacher. And um, when I first began doing that, what was amazing to me was how many of my creative um, skills and, and inclinations I was able to bring to being a teacher. There was, there was a lot um, there that, that really I, I was able to draw on my um, creativity. Um, and then I also, uh, did jewelry design for a while. I took uh, a collage class for a year and made a lot of, um, collage artwork. So when I stopped to think about it, even though I hadn't really picked up a paintbrush or done much drawing prior to starting about two years ago, there's this thread of creativity all the way along. Um, that it, it just sort of started making more sense. Thank you, Jocelyn. Wow, it's interesting that, that you talked about creativity because as you were sharing, I was thinking art has always been present in your life. I mean, you said that, you know, mm-hmm. as a kid, but as an artist, this art and that involves creativity. And being mm-hmm. a, being a teacher definitely will <laughs> will require you to be creative in order to relate with your students, right? So I'm I'm glad that you view that as it everything coming in full circle. Even though, like what you said, you just picked up a brush two years ago at the start of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. 
And also when you said that, it, it came to me as a surprise because when I look at your works, I thought that you've been doing this for a really long time. That's nice of you to say. <laughs> it, it, it came more naturally than I expected it to. Um, although I have to say, when I first started off, again, it was a hobby. I, I you know, we were all in quarantine yes. and I was looking for a hobby and I ordered some paints on a whim from Amazon. And um, I was I was trying to paint very traditionally. I was, uh, you know, painting flowers and landscapes and things like that. And, and I was enjoying it, but I was kind of frustrated because the things that I was producing never really matched what I was envisioning. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that got back to the fact that I really didn't do much drawing um, when I was younger. So I just don't have those skills. And so I was beginning to get a little frustrated, but I still really liked um, painting. So I, I started thinking, okay, so what kind of art do I like to look at? And I realized that I am more drawn to abstract art than representational art or realistic mm -hmm images. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, I like painting in watercolor. I, I've never re even really heard of abstract watercolor, but somebody must have invented it. I can't be the first one to think this way. So I started Googling abstract watercolor and started coming up with, first of all, it was just sort of a, a Google image search. And I started seeing some images that I was really drawn to. And that led me to um, some, first some YouTube um, videos, some how to's of, of doing abstract work with watercolor. And then eventually um, to an online class, which uh, taught me some compositions, some techniques, some materials to use. I've also taken some online classes um, primarily uh, based in um, in acrylic paints. Um, but I, I find, although I, I really appreciate other people's work in acrylic, it doesn't come as naturally to me. Mm -hmm. So I've, you know, pretty much focused on what I refer to as watercolor and mixed media. Because in my own practice, as I've moved more and more into just doing what, what feels right to me, I find that I break a lot of watercolor rules. I I use all sorts of things in combination. I mix things up, you know, I, I've got pencils and pens and crayons and, you know, every now and then I get out my acrylic paints and paint on top of my watercolors. So mm -hmm. it's it's a combination of just whatever I feel like is, is gonna work. Um, and it's a lot of, play and experimenting and and just trying things out lovely i i want to pick up on several things with what you shared first off you said because you've tried different things right uh, you mentioned about mm -hmm. jewelry design as well was that a an explicit decision to choose watercolor i i remember you mentioning that you ordered some paints from amazon was it watercolor or were there other the first set that I got was watercolor and I just I I guess because the little bit of painting that I had done when I was younger was watercolor I felt less intimidated by that okay um and I still have to say that I enjoy that it's easier to clean up <laughs> and it's more contained mm -hmm. and it's very portable I've actually, um, I don't know if you found this in your research, but I have painted every single day since January 1st, 2021, every single day I have created art in some way or another. And that has included painting in hotel rooms. Um, I have painted on an airplane. I have painted, you know, late at night. I remember one time I actually got in bed and then went, whoa, I didn't paint yet. And I got up and got out of bed and went painted. Um, I, yes, I, I, so, I actually, I, when I was reading it through it, I was like, wow, talk about consistency. And that's also one thing that I would, I would want to bring up when, when you said that you, you painted 
every day. How important is it? Because I, 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 it's funny when you said that I woke up in the middle of the night and said, I didn't paint today. It was like, it's part of your, you know, it's within you that, you know, that urge, the desire <laughs> to create daily. How do you think it's, mm-hmm. how important is it, Jocelyn, for someone who is probably starting out to be able to make the time to create or to paint in watercolor daily? Uh, you know, I mean, I I can't say that for everyone it mm. needs to be a daily habit, but I have definitely seen um, it has made a huge difference in my own practice because I have learned a lot more. I have made a lot of art um, and I just have a lot more confidence in what I do because I've had so many experiences with it. Um, You know, one of the other nice things about watercolor is, and especially watercolor combined with mixed media, is that sometimes I spend only 10 minutes making Mm -hmm. something. But I, I can do that with watercolor. You know, I can just put down some paint and then take a water soluble pencil and make a nice mark over the top of that and say, okay, I'm done for today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, painting every day does not mean painting for hours and hours every day. Sometimes it's 10 minutes. And then, I mean, yesterday I, I just kept coming back and painting and painting and painting. I ended up with four, new paintings um yesterday <laughs> so and that's um, exactly what I love about your works and your art uh and your process Jocelyn when we were talking offline I said that you know it's abstract art and for some people it <laughs> takes a lot of time to be able to figure out how you can you know pull elements together and create this composition that would appear beautiful and good from other people's pers- perspective with you you make it look so so easy and accessible and hearing you talk about how much time you spend creating and you know not painting daily doesn't have to translate to painting hours daily but Mm -hmm. spending Mm -hmm. 10 minutes to 15 minutes you can create art now one other thing that you mentioned as well was that when you started and you 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 painted you know the usual subjects that anyone <laughs> starting out with watercolor sure. flowers and the landscapes well you you said a really good uh, you made a really good point about painting what you love seeing what you love looking at would you say mm-hmm. that it's a good reference point or a mindset to have when you are starting out with your creative journey for anyone who's starting out I would say that creating from within rather than what other people expect of you or what other people have created. Mm -hmm. Um, I paint very instinctually. I mean, I have some certain things that I always keep in my mind when I'm painting and when I'm composing um, a painting. But in the end, I often end up with something completely different than I thought I would because I'm just allowing whatever instinct comes up. I often think of my painting as a conversation between myself and the painting. So I'll put something down and I'll see sort of what messages I'm getting from the painting. And then I will respond to that and I will, you know, and and so it's kind of a give and take um, between myself and my materials. I love that. I love how you put it into words and say that it's a conversation between you and the material because it speaks a lot about how you paint from within and I think that's really important Mm -hmm. especially when you are creating something that it's you're not with the goal to just please someone or you know just to create something because everyone thinks that's beautiful but you create from within and that's Mm -hmm. very evident in the works that you do like what I said there's consistency because it's abstract and then the mm-hmm. way that you mix elements together and create a very I would say cool composition that's <laughs> you know it's it's so amazing and one other thing that I love with what you shared earlier is that you bent a lot of rules with <laughs> yeah I want you to 
talk more about that because when we talk about art, right, people sometimes think that it's very com confined in this or the rules, these are the techniques. Of course, there are technical, you know, there are technicalities when it comes to mm -hmm. painting. But what I love about your art is that it's so liberating in the sense that you make it look as if that you are allowed to create because it's abstract. And yet, mm -hmm. you know, you said that you meant rules and it's still watercolor, but then you add in, you know, other materials. That's why it's abs mm -hmm. it's watercolor and mixed media. So can you share a little bit more about that bending rules? I'd like to hear more. Well, one of the rules that comes up a lot, um, you know, I'm I'm in a few different Facebook groups that are focused on the arts, and one of them is a watercolor group. And I I always have to kind of chuckle when somebody is asking about um, using white in watercolor. There's sort of this rule that yes. you're not supposed to use white, that the paper is supposed to be your white, or you're supposed to use water to lighten up. Um, if you want a lighter shade of a color. And I completely break that rule all the time. I actually like to put um, lighter paint into my darker paint to, br to brighten it up, but also um, to kind of make it a little bit more opaque. So I mm -hmm. like some different, you know, I like some, some of my paints to be more transparent, but some of them to be more opaque. And mm -hmm. so you know, I will throw in some buff titanium in with my colors. Um, or, you know, I, I don't I don't feel like I have to abide by, um, you know, longstanding watercolor rules because I'm not purely a watercolor artist. And that's very liberating. I mean, if I'm not following someone else's rules, I can make up my own. I can I can just play and enjoy and you know I I make enough art so that if I end up making something that I'm not all that pleased with it's okay because I know that tomorrow I will make something else um there's another thing that comes to mind which is that um because of my daily practice because I make so much art I have actually learned to appreciate when an accident happens, when I make a mistake, when a big blob of paint comes down or, or something doesn't go exactly how I wanted it to, because that kind of um, inspires me to make creative solutions to that. Awesome. So I've, I've actually kind of come to appreciate when these things occur and I can go, okay, let me figure out some completely non-traditional way, whether it's, you know, I, I grab a marker and I draw on top of it, or I, I grab a little piece of um, paper to collage over it, or, or I just, you know, paint a, a bigger area. Um, so, you know, that's, that's sort of part of that give and take, but it's also that being open to whatever happens and being flexible in your response to what happens. And, and that I think is, is part of um, abstract art, but also um, just using a variety of different materials instead of just sticking with one. I, I, I love how you brought up the, the topic of happy accidents because sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of people are so fixated in creating this is what I want to achieve with my painting. And this mm -hmm. is the only thing. If it's mm -hmm. not like that, then it's crap, right? But with mm -hmm. you, you, are, you were able to find creative solutions instead of like scrapping them. You, you were able to, quote unquote, fix it and provide creative solutions, which in, in my mind, I was thinking that's not, that's really good because it's not in for perfection. And you're more into the process and you learn as you go, which I think is really important, especially that you are teaching. Um, I'm mm -hmm. sure our listeners are watching this from YouTube, probably thinking right now that, okay, Johnson is talking about something that I have experienced whenever I paint something and I didn't like it, but she would manage to maneuver and then create, you know, find creative solutions. So maybe that's something that I can do too. So mm -hmm. progress over perfection. I think that's what I got from, from what you just shared. Speaking of teaching, 
I know mm-hmm. that you have a class that's upcoming with Etcher and pretty excited about this. Because uh, you were saying earlier that you don't, you haven't seen a lot of people do abstract watercolor. And uh, mm-hmm. so one thing that I love about your works is it's very consistent. It's abstract. And like what I said, I kept on repeating that, you know, you managed to put everything together so beautifully and with mixed media. So on the cover <laughs> six, you will be showcasing your process with us it's going to be 30 minutes Mm -hmm. so Justin can you share a little bit more about what they they can expect from the class from the short class that you will be sharing well as as I've um incorporated more and more uh, mixed media uh, materials into my work one of the things that has just become an essential to me is water soluble pencils, um, which are kind of like watercolor pencils, um, but these ones actually have even more intense um, pigment to them and the pigment is activated by water. And so um, there are a lot of different ways that I have learned to apply those to my work. And so this particular class that I'll be teaching Um, just shows some of my techniques for either using the pencils wet on dry or dry on wet or dry on dry and then wetting it. Um, And um, along with um, my abstract compositions, I often incorporate um, botanical elements. So you can actually see behind me a couple of my paintings that have, you know, flowers or sometimes leafy vines. Um, And so I just demonstrate um, how to draw in uh, a botanical leafy vine using the water soluble pencils on top of wet watercolor paint. So, um, so in the class, uh, I, first of all, teach, I'll teach the um, techniques and then we'll apply them into uh, a sketchbook composition and then onto a larger sheet of paper. Exciting stuff. I'm sure our audience are excited to watch that episode with Jocelyn. So watch out for the details. We will be including that in the description box. So if you, like what she said, if you're watching this from YouTube, you will you might be seeing her background. Those are her paintings. <laughs> Those are really beautiful, by the way. If you want to learn more about her, we'll also drop her Instagram account into the description box so you can check out her works as well. Now, at the start of the episode, Jocelyn, you, we, I, I mentioned that you recently retired and like what I said, like, yes. you know, to, re- to retire, but I read that it was a decision that you re- deliberately made because you felt that after 21 years of teaching, that chapter is, is done for you and you are on to a new chapter. Can you share a little bit more about that decision, decision process and what's up ahead? Because I know that you have a lot in the pipeline. You are licensing your art. You're going away to France, and recently <laughs> yeah. also I saw a banner. Your art was transformed into a banner. So can you share more about mm-hmm. that? Why you made the decision to retire? What's in the pipeline for Jocelyn, and you know what we can expect more from what you're doing as an artist? Well, teaching was a elementary school teaching was a very good career for a very long time. And I loved it for a very long time, but the last few years have been extremely difficult um, with the pandemic, you know, with all kinds of things. And along with that, I was starting to spend more and more time with my art. And I was just feeling that my focus was being drawn more and more towards my art. And so on the one hand, I was feeling like I wasn't able to bring as much energy and creativity into the classroom as I had been able to before. And on the other hand, I had this this wonderful new you know, world opening up to me and getting positive responses from from you know through social media and through people purchasing my work. Um, and So when I kind of looked at my situation and I I just felt like, you know, we, none of us know how long we have left on this planet. And I just felt like 
with whatever time I have left, I, I want to be doing something that I love. And my art is really calling to me. And so I was able to line it up so that I am going to be getting a pension from retiring from school teaching. Um, I've put a few other ducks in a row to um, make this possible. And there will be, I, I know that I will be doing a variety of other things. I may be um, teaching some more courses. Um, there's a variety of different things that I'm going to be putting together, but the end result will be that I can really focus more on my art. So um, right now I've been um, submitting my art to some various gallery showings. Uh, I'll be doing an artist residency, as you mentioned, um, in France. Yes. So spending a couple of weeks oh. over there making art. Um, and I have you know, the class coming up um, on the 6th. So just, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see <laughs> where this leads. Yeah, when I was, I was reading through it, I was like, wow, this is an entirely new chapter for you. And I can sense from how it was written that you are really excited to this new chapter. Um, mm -hmm. You are going to create your website. I've read that as well. So yes. there are so many things that are, lighting up but I love when you pointed out that you came at a point in your life that this is what I want to do I mean like what you said life is too short so and art is calling you and you are more drawn to making art and of course teaching kids that's very you know it's a noble job and I'm sure you've touched a lot of young minds but this is something that I think it's for you and it's a new chapter. So I'm really excited for you, mm -hmm. Jocelyn. So before we wrap up, I, you know, we've talked a lot of several things about your techniques and your journey as an artist. And you mentioned that you started this at the onset of the pandemic. But for anyone who's mm -hmm. starting out, what would be your golden nuggets for them? Because like what I said earlier, you're, you make your, when I look at your art, it's so accessible. It's liberating yeah. the sense that you mentioned this as well, that you don't aim for perfection. You know, when you look at accidents, mm -hmm. you make, you find creative solutions. So any other golden nuggets that you can share for someone who is starting out in their creative journey? Well, one of the things that for me was really liberating about making the choice to go into abstract art rather than representational art was the, the idea that, um, that perfection is not necessarily the goal. As a matter of fact, often in my abstract art, I, I deliberately make my lines a little bit wiggly or, you know, make things a little off center, that there's something a, a little bit more energetic about something that's not absolutely perfect. And as somebody who never felt like I could draw you know, the way that I envisioned to suddenly be drawing and painting and, and loving what, what I'm coming up with. Um, it, it really comes back to not striving for perfection, just striving for something that feels right, that, that comes from within. Um, and, and again, like I said before, the idea of making art that pleases you, that it doesn't have to please somebody else. It doesn't have to follow rules. It doesn't have to look like something realistic. It just needs to be something that, that feels good to you to do and then later on to look at. So I would say those are the, <laughs> the main things. Don't strive for perfection and, and just be true to yourself. Beautiful, Lisa. That's so profound, especially the point I just want to reference back to what you said that when you create it's a communication between you and the medium that you're using and mm -hmm. that reflects um with everything that you create because it comes from within Justin it's been a pleasure having you on I mean with the short span of time that we talk I learned so much <laughs> and I can see how much you love art and I'm sure our listeners pick up on that as well, your passion to create, which only means that the, the, the career that you have now doesn't necessarily mean that this is this is the only thing that you can do. There are, you know, endless opportunities out there. And for you, it is art. 
that's calling you. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing that piece with us. And again, if you want to learn more about Jocelyn's technique, do watch out for her recording, live recording, a uh, live workshop that's happening on September 6th. We will share the details into the description box along with um, her Instagram account if you want to check out more of her works. And also there is a link on your bio if you want to learn more about or if you want to subscribe to her newsletter. You can also do that. Justin, it's been a pleasure having you on Make More Art. Thanks again. Thank you so much. I look Thank forward. Thank you. It's been to, a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to everything that you have in the pipeline. Um, I'm sure it's going to be great. And to that residency in France, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And we'll definitely see beautiful works coming out of that experience as well. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Take care. Thank Bye. you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. I have learned so much from a conversation with Jocelyn. She is an inspiration to embrace your calling and follow where your passion takes you, to live life to the fullest and live it purposely. I hope this episode inspires you to start creating and reminds you that it's never too late to take on something you've always wanted to do. Share your reflections and realizations with us by typing your comments through the blog post associated with this podcast at etrolab.com slash Jocelyn.